And I'm back. Do you see me? Do you hear me? I don't know. Everybody, hold tight. <laughs> um, Twitch just said that for some reason it wasn't working, so I just restarted, and hopefully that works well. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to go into this and edit it a little bit. If you have any questions, just tell me in the chat. I will answer you, and if not, I'm just going to kind of groove for a little bit. Also, I just rearranged my desk a little bit, so it's not super comfy, so I'm going to uh, probably adjust some things while I'm here. Uh, definitely because of the keyboard, I had to do like really long typing things today, so I had to move this around a little bit, and I'm usually just using hotkeys, so I'm not used to it. But it's the way it goes, you know? Alright, so I'm going to turn off the colors so I can just see the design. I'm also going to offset each of these. So this is one of the key techniques of making a pattern is uh, the offset filter. You go to filter, other, and offset, and it basically you can change how many pixels it moves from one side to the other or whatever. Um, as long as they show me what I need to see, like I can see that this this line is the one I want to change, so it's perfect right now. Um, that's what I change, and then I just do it again. It's at the top this time. And then they match up. So as long as they're offset to the same pixels, you don't have an issue. Um, unfortunately, you can't offset multiple layers at the same time, but you know, you just make do. And especially if you do the edits for the like the actual pattern very early, then it wouldn't be that big of an issue. All right. Actually, I think I'm gonna offset this a little bit more because I do need the balloon mostly. Yeah, I think so. That end is the most, er, that end, as if you can see my hand. This end is the most important. Listening to music makes me so much more comfortable. <laughs> Listening to some Bowie, Starman. There's a Starman waiting in the sky. Shouldn't sing though, it's a dangerous thing. But you know, catch me doing it sometimes because I can't help, help myself. It's all about trying to create like an equal space between every element of this. And it's definitely not like perfect right now or, or anything, but you're just trying to get closer and closer basically. So it's not like the biggest deal if it's super off at the beginning. It's just trying to kind of massage it into place and knowing uh, what to edit is like almost all of design. <laughs> just knowing when something doesn't work is just as important as knowing how to make it work. Maybe I'll overlap it with the little raccoon's tail. I can move this guy too. Um, nothing's off the table. It's just trying to feel out what balance is best. So I'm just gonna start. Actually, before I do major changes, like I'm not mad at this, so I'm going to duplicate it just in case I want to keep it. I This is why I have a lot of layers usually. <laughs> it's just... Uh, you know, a habit that you get into, oh, I'm gonna duplicate this and duplicate that, and then at the end I usually do, will delete like 50 layers just because I duplicated them and I don't need them anymore. And suck at that. I'm going to just erase this too. And then move it. I'm one of the most impatient lasso toolers, I know. <laughs> I hate lasso tooling, it's just... To me, it, it doesn't, it's not fun. It's not like the fun part of art. I know a lot of artists who are amazing at using the lasso tool to create their art, and I just can't stand it. It's a personal touch kind of thing where like I enjoy the act of painting, and lasso tooling to me just feels like, it is a quicker means to an end usually, um, but it's not a fun means to an end. It's like I, I take the scenic route instead of the, the straightest path. But hey, if you don't enjoy what you do, then what the heck are you doing making art? <laughs> Alright, 
I'm actually thinking about flipping this guy in some weird way too, just because this doesn't need to be gravitationally based. It is a pattern, and if you view it from any angle, it should be beautiful. Um, some of them rely more heavily on being uh, like viewed from one angle, but I actually kind of like the idea of just having it be like any which way you can see it, something is facing you, you know? This guy's real cute. They're all real cute. I love these boys. Hmm. Then we could do something more fun with his tail, but I'm actually thinking that... See, what's keeping him feeling like really flat on the bottom is that these three things line up. So if I just offset those a little bit more, then hopefully it won't uh, read as quite as statically sitting on a surface. Now I'm listening to Grimes, if you want to follow along on this playlist. I actually really love my music, so yes, if you want to follow my playlist, I will give you everything. <laughs> And if I have any opportunity to make him fatter, then I will, always. <laughs> I like my raccoons real fat. I saw the gif of a seal today where its head like goes back into its body and it just turns into this blob with a face on it. It's so cute. Oh, maybe that will be the next one. It'll be seals. Seals and wheels. Because you know this is raccoon balloons and then the other one was bun buns. I should do seals because I love drawing seals so much. And they're really easy to put into like interlocking shapes because they're just so malleable. Um, I have one person watching. Is that you, James? <laughs> I bet you. Uh, what was I saying? Seals, and then we have to find something that rhymes with that, obviously. That I actually want to draw because wheels, I hate to take or leave it, you know, I want to draw something fun. I think a balloons is really fun because I imagine this like really bubbly, transparent kind of feeling balloon. Um, and then bun buns, obviously base goods and bunnies, come on. Can't, can't fail there. Also playing with like what elements overlap, should I have this string going across or being a border to? Let's just rotate it and see what we feel. Hmm. I have a lot of thoughts. It's not that I hate this or anything, it's just there are so many like small things I could change and be stronger in my mind, but it's always like a this versus that because now I can't really move anything without moving a lot of other stuff as well. Which isn't a bad thing, it's just a fact. <laughs> James. <laughs> You started, I just logged in. <laughs> Didn't know you had started. I can hear music in the background. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I didn't think it would uh, stream with it because I recorded and it didn't have it like in the background at all. So maybe when I stream it does have it in the background. That's fine, I can turn it off. I'll just leave in silence. <laughs> that was perfect, it was at the end of the song anyway. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I want to post these videos on YouTube afterwards, so if I have like copyrighted music in the background, uh, I just don't want it to be an issue at all. Even though I don't think it's the biggest issue, it's just one of those things like, I don't, I don't plan on having like monetized videos that get a million views or anything like that, it's just, um, you know, if I answer questions about the residency or something like that, I don't want a video taken down because I was selfish and had to listen to music. <laughs> I think my issue right now is that there's no barrier between these guys. I feel like this is a moment, and I had this as a moment, but now that I've tilted him, it's a little awkward of a moment. So, um, oh, I actually just had a little revelation. Maybe if I flip him, he's not looking quite as off, like, directly as this. And then I can create some kind of barrier with a few things. Maybe move him around a little bit, because there's also, there's space right here where I can move all this stuff down just a tad. 
Um, but first I'm going to try transforming, flipping horizontal. See what I can do with him. Transform. Now he's way upside down. But if you're thinking of it as a pattern and you can see it from any angle, he's not upside down at all. Time is irrelevant. Ah, space is nothing. Ah. Uh, James, you said, can it play through your headphones so the stream doesn't pick it up? That's what I'm doing. I'm playing it through my headphones from the computer. So it shouldn't be picked up. Um, I have no idea how it is, but it is what it is. <laughs> um, but I could I could play it off of something externally. I could try finding that uh, old iPod I have. <laughs> or my phone. I, I never play music on my phone. I always feel like that's for better phones. I usually buy cheap ones. But I have a pretty decent phone now, so um, maybe it could handle it. I'm not sure. But at the mo, I don't mind not having music. I'll just play it in my head. You know my brain is like a jukebox. <laughs> oh, it's true. I could use the laptop. I guess I do have like five computer things that I could use. <laughs> You're a smart boy. Maybe when Anthony comes by, I'll uh, set that up because I'm going to have to take a second of a break to get him his camera and say hi. This makes me want to flip a lot more stuff, so I might just... I could go crazy on this, though. Mm -hmm. I think it's these two create this like feeling of this is gravity. This is up and down. Oh, he's so cute though. I love him. He might be my fave. Oh, but an easy one to flip would be this uh, sleeping one. And also this guy. Oh, that's kind of cute. Now he's looking at him. He's like, father. What has become of you? You is balloon. I is raccoon. Uh, you know, when I was thinking of plants for this one, I was like, oh, I have to make it different from the bunny one. <laughs> so I offset the leaves. Look, guys, they're not equal on each side. They're offset now. Ooh, so different. <laughs> I definitely have some leaf shapes that I go to all the time, but... Uh, I want to study more plants and get some more variety in the skill set. Just of drawing plants. I think we need a bug in here. Maybe overhead of it. Ah, he's going to be going this way. So I have a few themes going on in this one. Raccoons, balloons, plants, and bugs. And berries, I suppose. I feel like the bugs, berries, plants, all are just kind of a uh, filler for the space, which is necessary in this one for sure. Hmm. All right, let's offset it again. Offset, and I gotta remember to offset this one. Oh, can't offset without it being on. So now you can see these things are stopping, uh, they're not matching up anymore just because I've moved some stuff, but that's fine. It's mostly about design and I only did a really quick color pass to make sure that it was uh, a color pass that I liked, you know? I wanted to start off with some color. And this whole sketch layer is going to be gone anyway. It's uh, just for placement, but the style that I've been using lately is very much not outlined. It is um, roughly painted. You keep the edge of the paint strokes, and then inside that you can do some defining lines and color separation, stuff like that. Thank you, James. He says, cute stuff. <laughs> just like you, baby. 
He's my husband, I can say that. <laughs> Legally. <laughs> I'm sure you're all cute. I now have two people, count them two, watching. Woo! Hey, person that's not talking, come talk to me. <laughs> Watch, it'll be Anthony or something. <laughs> it's my mom. No. I appreciate everyone who tunes in all the time. I'm going to chunk out this tail a little bit. I'm having some issues with this guy, too. His swoopy line. I have feelings. Maybe I'll shorten this tail a little bit. Chunk it out. But... Someday James will be so upset by something that I make that he's like got to come out of the room and actually join the stream so that <laughs> he says harassment. Hey, man, I uh, I could do that. It's fine. You can't say anything. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he'll come out here and be like, no, 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 draw it this way. <laughs> Someday he'll join us. We could stream simultaneously from one room to the next. How cool would that be? I mean, come on. Not quite sure how I'll handle this in paint, but you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, what else needs some fixin' before I throw it on the big file again? Uh, basically, we're doing this in a smaller file that's just the square and is repeated. And I'll show you how you can save that out as a pattern and apply it to a much bigger uh, canvas so that you can see it all tiled together. And that is the best way to check if it's working. Let's slip if see. Let's slip. Let's see if we can uh, flip this boy. That's actually kind of cute. I like it slightly tilted like that. It feels like it's more nuzzled in for some reason. Beep. Yeah, I like that. That's much more topsy turvy. Everybody's upsy daisy. Alright, the only other thing I really want to see is this boy. Yay! Um, he's pretty tilted. But we could probably emphasize that a little bit. I'm going to remember to offset this. And turn it back off and then this boy is going for a ride to see how far we could tilt him so that he's not just straight up horizontal in this crazy world we've got hmm let us see let us leave The thing is, this guy's string goes straight up here, and there's going to be one straight line, but I just don't want it to be too long. Maybe the balloon could be much closer to him, so we have a balloon right here, and then this guy has his own little moment going on. Then we push him further this way, I think. Probably fill this with more plants and maybe shove some stuff over. Let's see, let's see. We have it duplicated again back there, so even if I hate what I make, it's fine. I'm gonna make myself a little bit uh, bigger again because now it's always like a judgment of how much space are we using on the desktop. I just don't want to block any art with my dumb face. <laughs> and I'm going to erase out all this balloon stuff and just draw a new one. So we know that this line connects here. So. All I'm gonna do is put a comically small balloon right here and just see if that works. It's totally fine if it doesn't. I'm gonna try to create some funky motion with this line because it is our straightest line so I want to if possible not make it too um, stagnant and make it like you know inorganic. Yeah, and then this feels like 
some good areas to fill up with like plants and maybe a bug or two. A bugger. Oh, bugger. Oh my gosh, you know what's so exciting? I am doing basically like one of my dream projects right now, which I mean, I'm not getting paid for it or anything. I am just doing it to fill my portfolio, but it's an excuse to, you know, actually do what you want. And I am mocking up as many ideas as I can possibly have for a Harry Potter book cover. <laughs> that is so exciting to me just to get to do that. I mean, it's silly to say get to do that. I'm literally just giving myself permission, but um, making the time for it and making it like this is a future, like people could see this and say, oh, she fits this project due to that cover. That is the coolest thing in the world to me. And I am just so excited to see how it turns out. <laughs> of course, there's a ton of pressure because as Lee is saying, Lee is my mentor. He was like, okay, you kind of picked like, uh, you know, like illustrating the Bible. Like, yeah, draw Jesus. See, see how that goes down. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's been done a million times. It's sacred to people. It is so like wrapped up in its own, like, reputation that it's very hard to do something really original and really well and make it you know worth putting all that effort into so I'm, I'm gonna try my best I was gonna do Sherlock Holmes because it's a uh, royalty free and then he was like don't worry about royalty free and once that was off the table or public domain sorry uh once that was off the table I was like well there's only one option that I could do I have to do Harry Potter clearly I mean, who doesn't dream of illustrating Harry Potter books? That is just, like, the coolest job ever. Oh, and then we were looking through other covers, and he's like, yeah, you know who did the originals, right? And I was, like, blanking on her name. I know her name. It's Mary Grand Prix. But he was like, you've got to know this stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Rightfully so. I should know it. It's uh, one of those things that I feel like I'm really weak on is just remembering names. They go out my head like so much Play-Doh. <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah. To me it does. I'm imagining like the Play-Doh things where you squeeze it and it just comes out as noodles. That's me. <laughs> James Sherlock Poems, a series of children's book poems about crime solving. I love it. <laughs> but I want like Sherlock Holmes to be either the poet or some kind of like animal where the kid is like ry rhyming about the animal like going around and solving crimes. I still want to do Sherlock Holmes sometime because I think it's just you know so full of iconography and fun stuff that I would love to adapt for a children's market. Um, like making them instead of murder who you know did whatever. Golly I am so good at writing. <laughs> Ideas, ideas, uh-huh, yes, so good. That's weak. All right, I'm going to offset it one more time, and then I think we'll apply it to the big one if I don't see anything outstandingly wrong. And I mean, I, I could change all of this in the future. I might even just uh, lay in some of the elements in painting, like, oh, here are all my raccoons on a layer, and then readjust them a little bit, and then here are all my plants on a layer, and readjust them a little bit. So this is by no means final, but uh, it's somewhere to start. So I like it. And yes, there is a hot key for offsetting, but I just am too lazy. All right, yeah, I think it's looking fairly well balanced. Like if you blur your eyes and try to figure out where the busiest areas are and where the openest areas are, there's a little bit of finagling. Like right in here, I feel like there's um, a lack of plant life, but uh, I want some eye resting areas. So I'm gonna call it good for now and I'm going to put it into the big one. Put it into the big one. <laughs> sure, okay. So I first select the entire thing. I could also do, uh, well, I can do a lot of things to select the whole thing, but I just use the marquee tool. And then go to edit, 
and define pattern, whatever name you want. I usually give them nonsense names because I do this a million times. Then I go to the big one where all my old patterns are, put a new layer in there, go to edit, fill, make sure it's on pattern, go to the newest one at the bottom. Look how many we have in the past. Woo! And then fill it. Oh yeah, that's much better. Much, much better. So I think I'm going to shrink this guy down because he's taking up a little bit too much space. And then maybe I'll play with the shape of this balloon too, just to, maybe it would have a pattern. Ooh, that'd be cute if like one of the balloons had a pattern and then it would bake, make it a little bit less of an open space for your eye to rest and it would be like a, another decorative element. So that's fun. Um, but I am going to shrink him just to make sure he's not outstandingly large in comparison. And also I think there's a little flow issue with his legs. It feels like eh, eh. So um, I'm going to make that a little bit more organic. And James says, oh, I thought that was new. Sorry, no, it was still Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> You're not giving me enough, James, clearly. <laughs> I joke, I kid, I jest. You guys can talk as little or as much as possible or as you want. Okay. B. I'm throw the background in there again because I like looking at it. It's a pretty color. I'm going to curve him a little bit more. Doop, doop, doop. And I'm just like implying that there are hands and feet and stuff. Uh, one reason is just because I, I again, these sketches aren't going to be the final artwork. They're literally just for placement. But another one is because the style that I've been going for lately is definitely more uh, implied and less detailed than anything I've done before, really. So I'm just trying to cut corners wherever I can and imply the heck out of it. Not worry so much. I think that's the vibe of 2019. Just, you know, kind of do what you have to, but don't do more. Don't do like the excessive amounts to give yourself heart palpitations. You just need to, you are enough, you know, <laughs> at least that's how I feel. The way his tail is connecting to his bum is bothering me. I like the way this one goes. It's like a flow. And I love this one where it's just kind of like flat against the back. Maybe that's what I need. Flat against the back and then a little tuck up. Does that work better? Just don't want it to squinch too much. We could always like work on his design endlessly. Uh, but I want to shrink him to a tiny little muskrat. Beep. Oh, this is one of the new things in Photoshop that I've been getting used to. It's kind of, uh, <laughs> James says, hey. <laughs> yeah, hey to yourself, you know? What? I'm making the stream. You're just in chat. What about it? What about it? Show yourself on camera. Then we could talk. So, uh, <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, a feature of Photoshop that they just changed after Mac, so it's been like, since October, uh, was that they made sh uh, transforming. So when you're transforming something, boom, transforming, you no longer have to press shift for it to maintain its proportion. It just does it on its own. So sometimes I press shift and I'm just like, wait, what's going on? What's going on? And then other times I'm like, oh. Yeah, see, I don't have to press shift. That's nice. I think it's literally just one of those things you have to get used to. And over time, it will save you that minuscule amount of time that it would take to press shift. So anyways, ooh, now that he's small, little baby boy, do you feel like I want to redraw this tail? And I also want to, do I like the tilt or do I not like the tilt? I like his eyes. <laughs> They're so cute. Maybe his leg comes down now. Oops. Just gonna play around with the tail placement for a sec. And again, everything can change, so this isn't super important. Hey, we've got another person in the stream. Welcome. <laughs> I'm just working on uh, this patterning stuff. I thought, of course, that I was going to dive in and start painting, but now I'm just like, but wait, I have to edit some things. Um, so I'm just waiting to get to the painting uh, 
and working on this design issue stuff right now. Once again, see, I, I could like erase for days with this tiny little eraser and not use the lasso tool because I just, for some reason, I have a mental block about it. I like painting, <laughs> not lassoing. I almost want his tail to go above his head. I feel like that's the flow of what's happening. And that would be kind of cute, actually, if it wrapped around the balloon a little bit and all the fur was like facing the balloon. Because the idea here is that the static from the balloon is like pulling his fur up. So let's let's play with that idea. And Doop. Then we got the flow of his butt coming up, which I like a lot more. Butt coming up. I want the world to know that it's a butt for show. A raccoon butt. Hope you mad or <laughs> appreciate my freestylings. Lorva! Hi, Anna! Hi, Lorva! <laughs> Very nice to see you again. How are you today? <laughs> Got my regulars on the stream. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Got static going from the tail oh yeah working more on the raccoon balloons and uh just talking about raccoon butts you know the regular <laughs> as you do that's kind of cute i don't know i might change them later <laughs> uh you're saying doing well how are you happy to see you working on this yeah that's right <laughs> Uh, I'm doing quite well. Uh, my friend Anthony's coming over very soon. He actually should be here any minute. And he's going to take a camera back. So I'm going to like step away from the stream for just like a minute. And then I can get back to drawing. But um, yeah, he's been lending me this camera for like, oh gosh, like two weeks now. It's an extremely nice camera. Um, the one I'm using right now is a webcam, which I literally just got <laughs> uh, to make sure that that if you guys saw, I did a live stream on Facebook. Uh, golly, was it last... This... It was this week, wasn't it? The time got changed so often, I really can't even remember when it actually happened. Um, but we finally did it. I, <laughs> there was so much build-up to it, where it was like we had all these questions. I heard things from like an hour to 30 minutes. It ended up being literally 15 minutes. And part of that was because my audio kept on cutting out, apparently. Like, I couldn't tell, but... Everybody else was just like, I can't hear her. And literally the entire reason we were there was for me to answer questions about the residency. So it was really sad. But uh, I hopped on and did her, uh, the last, what do you call it? The last stream on here after that, just to make up for it. Because I wanted people to get the answers they were looking for. Uh, but all of that like borrowing the camera and everything was all just in preparation for it because i had this camera that decided it just wanted to turn off every single three minutes <laughs> and that was unfortunate but um yeah it, it resulted in me doing a lot more research and finding out what i want in a camera Luckily, all of the cameras that I've used for streaming so far, I've gotten to borrow from Anthony. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, he is a photo retoucher, but he also did a lot of photography. So uh, he's got really nice cameras and he's also a really nice person. So he let me borrow them. Uh, and James says, yeah, the interviewer had bad luck with his tech. He just couldn't get it working. Yeah, it, uh, that... I don't know if it was Paul's fault, really, honestly, but he is a fantastic host and he was all too nice. But we tried fixing that like so many times. And for some reason, it just it wouldn't work like my streams usually work pretty well. Right. I mean, I have recordings of them and stuff and they don't like skip out or have it, like really bad audio, at least that I know. of. Um, and so I was wondering, like, what makes it go bad? Like, is it some kind of compression technology that has to go through Facebook? I'm not sure. But whatever. <laughs> I'm glad this stream works. Yeah, me too. 
I love Twitch and I love OBS. They seem very simple, straightforward. It's literally like the easiest part of this whole streaming thing was just the software part of it. I think getting the hardware for it is a little bit of a stretch. I, I guess because I went for DSLR first instead of a webcam. Um, which I do love the look of DSLRs, and I'm actually looking at getting a Sony A5, or 5100, how would you say that, 5100? And, uh, I think that's, like, a good middle ground to start with, like, it's not thousands of dollars, it's, like, 500, and then the dumb thing about cameras, it's kind of like the equipment for drawing digitally, a lot of people have been complaining lately because um, Wacom came out with a new, like, affordable, for starters, kind of Cintiq. And, I mean, I appreciate that they tried, even. But people are saying, like, it's not cheap enough. Like, you expect, start like, beginners or hobbyists to get into this for, like, what, $1,000 or something? I can't remember the price exactly. Um, but you can look it up. It's big news over at Wacom. And uh, I just... There's always a technology element where it seems like they try to get as much money out of you as possible. I'm not saying this particularly for Wacom because I love them. They gave me this antique, not speaking ill, but I'm just saying like in general technology, the idea that you have to pay a lot for it. It's just like the Apple phones. Everybody says like they aren't as good of technology as you're paying for. They're not like the top end of anything and you can't even like change what's inside them they're completely just in their own case don't break into them don't change anything as opposed to a pc where you can like upgrade it or something like that um but these things uh it just made me think of like photographers because of this whole camera thing that i'm going through cameras themselves they're not super expensive and from what i've seen there isn't like a huge amount of difference that it makes between a really expensive and a really cheap camera, or at least like moderately cheap. I'm sure if you get a really cheap one, it would be a huge difference. But the lenses are what really make the difference. That's, or so I've heard, like I am not an expert, but the lenses can cost upward to like $2,000 per lens. And that's like, are you expected to do that if you're a hobbyist? Or is that only for professionals? But then if you're a hobbyist, are all your photo is going to look really bad because you don't have the right lens is it like you know it's just one of those things where I feel like uh if you have to buy a Cintiq to be an artist that's sad it's a lot of money if you have to buy an expensive lens to be a photographer that's sad it's a lot of money so uh I don't know I have I have mixed feelings I also understand that if it's your career, it's probably the best investment you can make. But is it worth the money that you're spending? I don't always know that because I think only few people who actually build these technologies know that. <laughs> um, but I have I have read a few articles where it's like, uh, James, you might know or remember better than me. Um, it was something like there is basically a monopoly on memory storage that they won't release the technology that can make it exponentially more memory available to people for much cheaper. They keep it very expensive on purpose. So that, I mean, obviously, if you're the only one with a good, why would you make it cheap? <laughs> um, and, you know, it's not that big of an issue when you think about what's happening in the medical industry and like how they uh, make, you know, life giving medicine the most expensive thing they could possibly make it. That is pure evil. Um, and when you think of like, memory storage it pales in comparison to how important it is to get your meds um but it still is an issue it's just the greed of the human being you know i wish i wish we could all just get along <laughs> anyways i went on a tangent sorry about that <laughs> i'm thinking of filling this space maybe i'll have one balloon creep out of here and come up here that'd be kind of cute right maybe two Ooh. Yeah, it kind of elongates the shape, makes it a little bit more interesting. The important thing about these balloons I want is overlap, because these areas I want to have a mixture of color, which will make them feel very transparent, and that's going to be fun. So I'm just creating a bunch of Venn diagrams about here, and then I'll tell you how I feel about the world by filling these Venn diagrams with certain word choices. <laughs> It'll be great. <laughs>
And I might end up making these like different shapes as I go along again. When I paint it, it's probably gonna shift a lot. And I'll probably have them on their own layers too, so that it can have some like set to overlay and things like that, so they can naturally mix colors and see what kind of cool stuff they come up with. But we'll see. Uh, and I might make the shapes a little bit more oblong and irregular. Because I kind of like that. But I could try on a separate layer and just make them perfectly round. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. This guy I want to elongate for sure. Because I feel like I want it to feel like this balloon is like really tugging to get him upward. Like, ugh. If you guys know animation uh, terminology, squash and stretch, this would be a stretch so that he uh, feels like it's being pulled up. Stretch it. All right, let's apply it once more to the big one and see what we think about it. Although I do see this, I don't wanna fix it. Making these curls organic kind of is one of my things where I just have to get it right, even though I'm probably gonna change it a million times still. It's, it's one of those things I really want to see, at least loosely. Okay. Boop, 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 Save. Always save your files, people. Does it count if I'm like humming or booping a song? Because I just got content flagged by Sesame Street then. <laughs> okay. Edit, fill, pattern, newest. Immediately, how do you feel? <laughs> hmm. I have lots of feelings. Let's talk about them. Today in Anna's therapy session. <laughs> what do I think? I think I want another strand going through this area. Maybe he's got like a little collar string and it goes somewhere, goes somewhere. But overall, I'm digging it. I, uh, I think we should start adding color and see where that gets us. Oh, we added color. How about that? <laughs> now I'm going to actually like clean this up a little bit. Once again, I'm going to duplicate. And then unlock the pixels so I can paint, paint, paint. I'm going to use my bristle bomb brush, which creates that beautiful edge that I love. Do, 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 do. And today on Sesame Street. Do, 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 do. Did you guys watch Sesame Street? I definitely did. No. There we go. I am using the lasso tool, good for me. <laughs> Basically, all I want to do is fill in these shapes really quickly so that I can see how they feel on the big one too. So uh, this is just for the benefit of the eye. Oh, I think I just shifted all this plant stuff, so I'm just gonna try to lasso it and then shift it. Yeah, oh yeah, time saver ish. <laughs> hey, we've got four people. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> and feel free to ask any questions or uh, comment on the state of the world or <laughs> tell me what your favorite animal is. Oh, oh, by the way, Laura Va, I was. Uh, talking about doing a pattern with seals because I saw this really cute seal video today. So what rhymes with seal that I could make a pattern out of and is fun to draw? Because <laughs> I was thinking seals and wheels, but then I didn't want to really draw a wheel. Uh, although, I mean, there are some kind of cool looking spinning wheels. Like, I don't have a thing against it. It's more like, do I really want to draw it? Like, really badly. That's the idea. 
Because once I thought of raccoon balloons, I was like, I got, I got to draw it. Got to do that. Yas. Seals and peels. Would that be weird? Like the peel of an orange. Oh no, that's a little odd. Do 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 and today on Sesame Street. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. I love this guy. You ever just paint something you want to hug? You adorable little fiend. <laughs> All right, you say seals in wheels. I love, but wheels aren't as fun. Let me think to draw. <laughs> it's exactly what I was thinking. It's just like, it's not super fun, but I mean, if it's got to happen, it's got to happen. The seals must exist. It is so declared. I'm digging this uh, color palette that we came up with. I know we were very torn whether we were going to go for the more yellowy one or the blue one, but I'm digging the blue one today. I really like it. Doing less detailed coloring today just because I want to quickly decide whether this is a good layout and then I can really dive into the colorful force. Seals, banana peels, seals. Tricycle wheels, seals, for reals, for reals, seals for reals, <laughs> seals and po po meals. What? <laughs> oh, I hiccuped. One more little flower. Boop, boop, boop. Hey, we're up to five people. If you're just joining, uh, feel free to ask me any questions. I am just coloring in some raccoon balloons. Just uh, figuring out the balance of this pattern. And it is a uh, tileable pattern, so I'm going to throw it on the big piece soon and show you what it looks like tiled. Also, did I show you guys, I can't remember, um, the bun bun pattern that I made earlier, uh, I put it on some mock-ups so that you could see it as if it were wrapping paper on our apron or, uh, what was the other one I did? Oh, a shopping bag. They were really cute. So if you want to see those, just say so in the chat and I can pull them up real quick. Because it is really rewarding to see your stuff in context. And also feel like, hey, maybe someday I could have a wrapping paper or something with my print on it. All right, I think we've roughly laid it all in. Let's turn off the lines for a second and see what that feels like. Pretty good. I mean, it's it's not um, not bad considering that the lines aren't in there, like the balance of everything. That's what I'm looking at. I think that the biggest open areas, like down here and up here, uh, might need a little bit of finagling, but it's not the biggest deal. So, let us leaf. I'm going to duplicate this group and flatten it down. Oh my gosh. Cartwheel, oatmeal, squeal, steel, automobile. Oh, I love these ideas. They're great. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so out of those, I, let's see. Um, I instantly was like, ooh, oatmeal, it's interesting. But now I'm thinking about like painting it. I'm, sh I'm wondering what it would look like. If I did it in a bowl, it would feel too much like my old job where I made assets for video games. And making like oatmeal in a bowl, it doesn't appeal to me at all anymore. <laughs> like doing a perspective of a bowl. Windowsill. Seals and windowsills. What does that even be? Like, what would it be? Like, a bunch of silhouettes of, like, windows with seals sitting on the windowsill. <laughs> Why did you make this pattern? It just came to me. I had to, clearly. Okay. Uh, filling with the latest version. Ooh. What do you guys think? Okay, so... I think that the tail is a little bit too close to this guy. I think I want a little bit more separation between those two. Do, 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 do. What if I rotated that entire scene, like the balloon and him? That'd be interesting. <laughs> Laura Va, you do not need to apologize at all. She says, sorry, I'm not the best at this. <laughs> you are the best, okay? I'm doing it, window seals. Window seals! Window seals! What? Could that be a thing? I don't know. We'll see. What if, ooh, ooh, what if the pattern is a bunch of, like, uh, windows of different shapes that kind of fit together? That'd be cute, first of all. And then, through the window, you see underwater, and there are seals swimming through it. Would that be cool? I mean, I mean. Ideas. Nothing's bad. Nothing's a bad idea. It's fine. <laughs> yes. Uh, James says, nice. I thought it was fun, Lore. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, you're full of great ideas. It's all just how my brain disseminates it and uh, hopefully does its justice. <laughs> justice reigns from above. Should I do an Overwatch pattern? <laughs> Okay, so this to me is looking good enough to paint. I might change some things along the way, but that's my prerogative. Uh, you guys definitely tell me your feelings about this and the balance of it and such. I also, hmm, hey, hmm, hey. did I collapse the cut? Yeah, I did. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to uh, figure out if the colors are exactly what I want them to be. But again, we can change that along the way, too. Boop. All right, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Whoa! Did they send me daughters when I asked for sons? You're unsuited for the rage of war. So pack up, go home, you're through. How could I make a man out of you? I'm never gonna catch my breath. Say goodbye to those who knew me. Was I fool in school for a cutting gym? This guy's got him scared to death. Hope he doesn't see right through me. Boy, I really wish that I knew how to swim. Be a man, you must be swift. Okay, I gotta stop. Sorry, it's just gonna go on and on. <laughs> Remind me, no singing. I'm just going to cut these pieces apart real quick. Uh, so I'm selecting all the plant life right now. And bugs. Plants and bugs. They can go together, right? That's fine. But I want to start keeping them on separate layers so that I can more easily move stuff when it's when it's going down. Do -do -do. This time I have to remember that I have lines in this as well because last time when I was doing the bun bun one, I had all of the painting done and everything, and then I was like, why is there just so much empty space in the middle of this? And I was like, oh yeah, I had this like ribbon going throughout the entire thing, and I just completely forgot. Be the man, you are the man, and you are the man. Do the things that the man and do. Do da 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 ba da da ba da da Alright, we're on for raccoons. Should I have the raccoons on the same layer as the balloons? Sure, why not? I don't think there's a detriment to that. Easy enough to move. Oh, 
bit louder. Boom. Missed one. Boom. <gasps> Missed one. <gasps> Boom. Yeah. Got it all. Good. Okay. Boom. All right. So now we've got raccoons and plants. Mise en place. Mise en place. Mise en place. Okay, so one thing that I wanted to try while I have these guys on their own, I can turn off the lines and kind of see, oh, there are the raccoons and balloons. I'm going to try flipping this guy just to see, whoops, oh, come on, uh, what kind of balance I can strike with him. Because basically he's just surrounded by these lines, where are those lines, there we go. Um, these like curving lines so those lines and the plants of course plants are just they fit between the pieces so I need to completely ignore the plants basically uh, and then hopefully this can work out pretty nicely yeah I think this will work pretty well it's all in the imagination, you know? If you can envision it, you can make it happen. Come on. Come on. Okay, I think that fits better. This line doesn't have to come out that far. I could delete that whole section and have it be a little bit closer. Just so these guys aren't super close either. The whole issue was these guys were too close. At least the issue to me, I don't know if I'm crazy. <laughs> it's looking very nice. What do you wear on your fingers? This is a... James knows the name of this. It's very technical, but uh, it's just basically a glove that makes it so the friction uh, doesn't hurt <laughs> hurt your pieces. Like, there is no friction between you and the screen, so your hand can effortlessly glide along the Wacom Cintiq. And I love it also because it cuts down a little bit on the heat transfer of it, like, going into your hand. Sometimes after hours of drawing, you'll find that your hand or the side of it is really hot. I also have eczema, so my skin's really sensitive, especially between the fingers. Uh, and actually, I haven't had any eczema like outbreaks or anything for quite a while. So, good thing. I don't. That's awesome to me. <laughs> uh, but I don't know if it was just because of this. I might have less stress in my life. I might have more uh, moisturizing going on. <laughs> there are many factors. But yeah, I've actually uh, enjoyed the glove so far. It's almost, in my mind, it's a little bit silly because you need a glove to draw. Like, eh. It feels like um, driving gloves almost, where you're like, all right, I've got my Porsche and I've got my gloves. <laughs> and uh, having a, a brand new Cintiq really does feel like a Porsche. <laughs> I'm just like, wow, this thing is so pretty. All right, I'm going to reconnect these lines. What if... He is the line. It's a little too direct. This is our opportunity to readdress this issue. Because in my opinion, when you see this from afar, one of the places that really stands out is this like curvature area. And still this. The swoop of this raccoon, I think, is very... Um, calls attention to it. Maybe I'll add a little bit more plant life around that. I'll make a note of that. We're busy. There we go. Something like that. James says it's a Huon anti fouling glove for working on Cintiqs. Whatever that means. 
fouling. Uh, it keeps the heat from the Cintiq from making your hand sweat, which causes friction and makes it hard to draw. Now you know. Noted, that's so helpful. <laughs> Absolutely. I think uh, if you're drawing on a Cintiq all day, it's one of those like really cheap, small things that you can just be like, I'm a little bit more comfortable. Which is nice. Hmm. This doesn't have to be perfect right now. I'm just messing with it because it's here. make this one tied with a bow because it's cute. Nah, it looks weird. It's fine. <laughs> James says, also keeps you from smudging the screen. And you kind of dust it as your hand goes along, so <laughs> it's multi-purpose all around, basically. <laughs> I legitimately have the black eyed piece stuck in my head. to an organic nah, whatever. All right, I'll leave that for now. Um, but I'm glad that we moved him. I feel better about that, which is always nice. <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay, now we have to deal with the plant carnage. All plants without lines, you are eliminated from the game. Now we're going to go back to the bristle ball and we're going to just fill in some of these planties. And then we could go in and start like finagling some colors uh, within our color palette. Like I don't like when all of the leaves are the exact same color so I want to change some of those up just slightly. And then I'm also going to delete this area so that we don't get it all mixed up. This is going to be one leaf or stick bris bristle. What? <laughs> what do you call it? Branch. Is that the word I'm looking for? Brain? Obviously no worky today. So sorry. I'm gonna have this one curve a little bit more to the side. There we go. Alright. Now we could like infinitely add plants, so I'm just gonna call it and then uh, yeah let, uh, what do you guys think start with the raccoons or start with the plants hmm <gasps> Zona's here oh man we got the crew together guys guys thanks for coming back <laughs> you're just like my regulars it's awesome <laughs> and tell me about your life and your day and how you are because <laughs> I want to know Okay, everybody's here. Uh, awesome. And saying hello to each other. You're also nice. I love it. So, we're painting more raccoons and balloons. I'm going to start making these. Here, what I'm going to do is just turn the... Those aren't the right lines. There we go. I'm going to delete the old lines so that we don't get <laughs> confused. Ah! <laughs> There's a lot here. Okay. Where the heck is the right line? Okay. This one's the right line. So I'm going to delete this old one so we don't get confused. Same with this old stuff. Just all of this. Don't need it. <laughs> so many lines. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> but hey, it's a line world we are living in. And I am a liney girl. Five points to whoever gets that song reference. It was very loose. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm actually gonna bring up one of my other patterns, the bun buns for reference here, because I just wanna um, kind of keep the rendering style a little bit consistent. Not, it doesn't have to be exact, but 
It always helps to have reference, don't you think? Oh, my shoulders are hurting. And Anthony's not here yet. James, maybe check on Anthony and see if he's coming. <laughs> Anthony says he'll make a, an appearance on the chat. So, or not chat, the video, the stream, so you guys can see his beautiful face. I'm going to force him to. <laughs> okay, so this is, oh, this is the bun bun. So, we're just trying to kind of keep in this kind of vein. I keep scrolling wanting to zoom, but I guess I have to use this. Boop. So it's real loose leaf stuff. Like, it's not necessary to be super final about it. Um, but these are offset leaves. Super different. Uh, and we're just keeping it, like, loose and simple. It doesn't have to be tied down. Just remember that. Loose and simple. It's already a more complex pattern, in my opinion. So we just got to make sure not to get too caught up in things. And if I do start getting, like, finicky about something, just remind me and be like, hey, Dumbo, stop. That's always helpful. I would love if somebody just always popped out and told me to stop when I need to stop. <laughs> hey, Bailey! Oh, hello! We've got some people in here. That's so exciting. Yo, Bailey. Yo, Zona. Ooh, it'll be fun to have faces to names. <laughs> yeah, James. Get out here. <laughs> My husband, James, is in the chat. So you can say hi, but he is literally sitting in the next room. So, I mean, why isn't he out here chatting in person? There's no reason not to. <laughs> no, he's actually working on his own stuff, so I don't want to bug him. But sometimes he should come and visit us, right? By the way, people who are uh, applying to the residency, how are you feeling? Is it going well? Is it going badly? Do you not want to talk about it ever? <laughs> just let me know your thoughts and I, I don't need to press or anything. I just uh, am curious how it's going. Alright, I'm going to start on this corner and then move my way up. And I'm literally just cleaning leaves right now. It's not the most entertaining. So uh, make me talk about something entertaining so that you guys don't just feel bored. Hey, Bailey, you just finished applying last night. That is awesome. High five. That is a huge achievement. <laughs> Fantastic job. And you should feel very good about yourself because even just applying is like a feat. <laughs> uh, Lorva, I'm applying for the second time this year. Excited, but also nervous. Of course. Yes, I totally understand that. Uh, I would try as much as you can to just put it out of your mind after the application's in. It's literally out of your hands. Just pretend like the residency doesn't exist, and then if they email you, you'll just be like, "Wow!" <laughs> but uh, it's it's no use worrying about stuff. You know, it just makes you suffer twice. Uh, Zona says, I outlined my whole script today and I'm trying to narrow down the style of my animations for my video. Oh my gosh. I am so proud of you for doing that. Like, oof, that's a lot of work. And I mean, you should be very proud of yourself for it too. Just putting effort into like, I, I've said this a million times so you might have heard me, but um, even if you don't get picked, this is just a journal of what you want to do with your life. And you can literally point to it at any time and tell people, this is what I want to do. And that is one of the biggest stumbling blocks that I've found with people wanting to do a job but having nothing to show that they are ready to do it. And people only hire you if you're ready, so <laughs> you gotta have something to back it up. So great job, guys. This is like the best thing you could do for yourself. <laughs> yay, Bailey! Yay, Bailey! Yay! <laughs> uh, Zona, doodling the mood board at the same time as watching. Oh, heck yeah, we're drawing together. I love it. Drawing buddies. Uh, Bailey, I feel better about it this year than last year since I had an idea already started. That, yeah, it makes it a lot easier. I did an idea just for the residency the year that I didn't get in, and now I realize that, like, it's better if you're you're making it for yourself and not for them. Uh, but, you know, it just depends on what kind of timetable you have. At the time that I was making my book dummy, before I was even thinking of it for the residency... I had literally no work happening, and it was not fun because no work means no pay. 
So I was living a very uh, destitute life, but making the work that I was hoping to make. And I hate that trade-off, so thank goodness for the residency, right? Because <laughs> it's literally like, hey, here's here's the money so you can actually do the thing without worrying about starving to death. Yay! Oh, so dumb that that's, like, necessary, but I guess we went into art. I mean, are we expecting people to be patrons like they used to be, where it's like, hey, could you just pay for me to make art during my lifetime? Thanks. That'd be cool, right? <laughs> We should call Adobe the Medici. They are our patrons. Uh, all right. Uh, Lorva, you said, thank you for the advice. You're such an inspiration. Yeah, it will make me feel all weepy. <laughs> I'm really glad that it's useful, though. Like, honestly, I would put this out here, and it's up to you guys to actually use what I say. So, I mean, congratulations to you for just, you know, picking up on it. And thank you for doing it, because I'm really really excited i i hope i want to see a ton of the applications this year like i'm gonna ask julia if i can just like comb through what came in <laughs> i don't know if that's allowed but like i mean i'm not able to be like yeah choose this person or anything like that but um i definitely want to see like just all the work that's being put into it and know how many people are applying this year because i swear it's going to be like twice as many as last year based on all the people that i've heard talking about it and how they've advertised it this year like it's just it's a lot uh all right zona said oh you guys are chatting i love it <laughs> zona says that's pretty much uh what i'm doing right now trying to make stuff for my portfolio and applying for practical design jobs at the same time it's a lot of work i am I mean, like, it's a part of your life that some, like, most artists have to go through unless you're born into money, but uh, it is something that I will never stop respecting artists for. Like, if you meet people who are well into the industry, just know that they had a past just like that. There's always a struggle involved. And uh, power to you, you know? Just respect artists. <laughs> They're powerful people. Yeah, and Bailey says I'm doing the same. Ugh it's a tough life but one thing I can say about like coming out of the residency is at least for me I I feel like I won't have to go back to that life like I am set it actually did set me to the point where I'm like I would have to screw this up to go back to not having um income and not having like opportunities coming my way so that's huge. <laughs> it's a really big thing to be able to say, like, I feel pretty stable, but, like, I mean, I feel stable-ish. I don't know if I'm going to make, like, the most money this year or anything like that, um, but it's it's something where I know where to look now. I know who to connect with. I know where to go to, um, you know, hone my craft as well as my opportunities in life, which is so much of just making it an art is exactly that. I went networking yesterday and met Paul Tranny. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Oh, my gosh. He's a super, super nice guy. Are you in uh, Denver? Did you meet him in person or online or something? But, um, yeah, he's a good one to know. All the Adobe people, like, they always look out for people. This is one of the blocks that I had to get past, actually, uh, with networking, is feeling like you're using someone to get somewhere when literally you are helping them just as much as they're helping you. Like, if you were to uh, go to a publisher or something and say, like, hey, here's my work, which I'm literally doing in February, I'm going to talk to, like, publishers in New York, which is kind of crazy to me. Uh, and it's still very daunting, of course, to talk to strangers and be like, I'm worth your time. Um, but what you have to think is they're looking for artists. They are actively seeking out people to illustrate their books or write their books or whatever, you know, you're looking to do in the industry. There's somebody who needs your help. So you have to see it as you're not, you know, networking for your own sake. You're networking to make what you want to make happen. And they want to make it happen just as much as you do whether it be animation or children's books or any of the above it's in order to make it happen it's a group effort so just find the right group and they'll love you just as much as you love them oh man you guys 
Uh, yeah, that was fun. Zona says, yes, I went to a creative jam for UI and UX. That is so awesome. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm good at the talking part and then I need to work on the providing value for them part. <laughs> That's so funny. Talking is providing value. Uh, having good conversations with people. Sorry if my chair is loud. Um, having good conversations and being good company is like 90% of it. There are so many people who are great artists or designers or whatever and if they aren't somebody that you want to hang out with, if they're somebody that kind of makes you feel a little off put or something like that, or definitely if they make you feel uncomfortable, why would you work with them over the guy that you totally dig and are like, we get along like best friends, you know? So you just like talk to them like normal people. And if they like you and they like your work, then hopefully when that right opportunity lines up where you're just meant for it, they'll remember you. That's networking. Like they just... They remember you. It's that easy. <laughs> and you remember them. Always remember that too. If uh, if you can be that opportunity giver for other people, that's so important just for the lifestyle of artists and giving and taking and all that stuff. It is uh, very reciprocal. So always remember like your friends as you uh, grow in the industry and things like that. Like if you see an opportunity that they fit into, make sure to do your best to connect them to that opportunity. And I promise I will do that in the future as well. I always look out for my friends as much as possible. It's, uh, one of the reasons I want to get more connected in the industry is just to do that, just to connect people as much as possible because the more people I know, the more opportunities I know about, I, I'm not going to be right for all of them, but I will know people who are, and then we all get to rise up together. And obviously I have the best taste in people, so <laughs> all my friends are awesome to work with. <laughs> it is true, though. I have great friends. <laughs> oh my gosh, Bailey says I'm terrible at the talking part. <laughs> it literally is just takes practice. Just talk to people, it's fine. Uh, and... Also, if you have a, something that you remember as a bad interaction, trust me, they do not remember it as much as you do. Like, when you get embarrassed or have some kind of reaction in your brain where you're like, oh, that wasn't the best I could do, you remember it so easily. Where it's like, you know, that thought before you go to bed that just creeps into your mind. It's so dumb. But think about the embarrassing moments that you've seen for other people. You probably don't remember many where it's like, oh, they, you know, screwed up a sentence or like they said something slightly off. That flies out of your brain so fast. It's just gone. So just give yourself that same kind of uh, benefit of the doubt where you're just like, oh, I they probably don't remember that <laughs> like I do. So even if you have a bad one, it, it doesn't stick. It's fine. And trust me, everybody who talks has a fib of some sort where you're just like, oh, that was awkward. <laughs> trust me, I've had plenty. <laughs> But I'm an awkward person, so it's fine. Zona says, I always get cards and then I never get coffee with them. Oh, totally. Yeah, I need to change that part of the equation. I totally do that, too. Sometimes you're just like, oh, I started the process, but I did not finish it. Um, I'm fairly good at the online network life, uh, at the onward <laughs> online network life. Does that count? Absolutely. Uh, Bailey says, I think any network counts. It's true. Uh, Zona says, which reminds me that I need to get a blog on kinetic type resource post up for someone. Kinetic type. Huh. Interesting. I've never heard of that. Uh, Bailey says, ooh, link when you do. <laughs> that makes me feel better. I have plenty of awkward moments. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we all have, trust me. Uh, but... Uh, online networking is just as important, especially with the way the world's going right now. It's just more and more online. I've had or heard of plenty of people uh, who get jobs just from online networking. Like, they don't even meet these people in person. It's literally just, we saw each other's work on Twitter or something, or, like, this agent found me. That's the first agent who ever contacted me way back when I, I did not have a children's booky style. It was very much more like animation. And, uh... They were like, oh, have you ever thought about children's publishing? I probably told the story a million times, but uh, she never got back to me after that. But uh, she found me on Twitter 
through the visible women's hashtag. If you've ever seen those like hashtags where, you know, you post your work and tell a little bit about yourself, those things can be really, really good for your career. So I would encourage you to post those, especially on Twitter, just because other artists see you too that way. I use Twitter mainly to talk to other artists, not even um, for like getting jobs or anything like that. Uh, Instagram to me is for getting followers rather than like, uh, talking to artists necessarily, although I do talk to some. Um, but Twitter is that main one where I'm like, I've got some of the people who have inspired my artwork over the years following me on there. And I'm like, oh, how did this happen? What? 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 So cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. Zona says, will do. I'm going to switch gears and get that up tonight. Good job, Zona. You're doing the good work. <laughs> uh, Laura Vaz says, I'm good with public speaking, but I'm bilingual, and a lot of time my pronunciation is off when I speak in front of people, but that never happens otherwise. Totally. Don't worry about that at all. Uh, Laura Vaz says, I feel like my brain doesn't have the time to process into English when you're speaking live. I totally understand that. I mean... I, I'm not bilingual, so good job for being bilingual. That is in itself such a huge thing. And um, I do have, I mean, friends from the residency now. There are two from uh, Germany who speak German and English, and they felt that kind of pressure to, like, oh, we're expected to speak, and uh, they don't feel like they're quite as easily fluent as when they're like relaxed in conversation as they are when they were alive or at least that's how it was at the beginning of the year we've spoken live so many times now that i'm sure we're much more comfortable now than we were um but i never saw a problem with it honestly because it just felt like their brand of speaking like it was almost a way of um sorry my headphones just went weird um it was almost a way of uh now I feel really weird. Okay, those were noise canceling headphones, and I and now I can hear everything in the room. And I'm like, wait, what the world? <gasps> Anyways, uh, so the um, the thing about language, I just think of it as almost like showing their personality a little bit. I know it must be, feel a little bit more frustrating when you're um, the one who's speaking, and you're like, I want it to come out differently. But when you're hearing it it's charming it's like oh they like they take a moment to think about what they're speaking they you know find the right words for it or at least try to and that is something that shows like a I don't know a character of some kind I enjoy it a lot but that's just as a viewer just know that you're not annoying or holding anything up by speaking two different languages that's just like awesome <laughs> I admire speaking different languages quite a lot I hope to learn another one someday when my brain can handle it <laughs> uh, Zona says I love Twitter I've met so many people there I totally same here uh, I got all nervous today when I realized there were five to six motion graphic studios I want jobs at that were following you on Twitter that's so cool oh I love it <laughs> Yeah, room noise is something I forgot exists. <laughs> uh, I think there are batteries in this. These are headphones that, once again, Anthony lent me. So thank you, Anthony, all, again and again. Uh, but there are uh, batteries in it of some sort, I think, and they uh, create the noise-canceling effect in this. So when the noise-canceling turned off, I was like, this is weird. And then I took the headphones off, and I'm like, real life, what is this? I can hear myself talk, and that's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like certain things that make comfort a little bit off <laughs> also I'm very aware that this microphone catches a lot of noises when I was first setting it up I was like I can literally hear across the room really easily and so now when I'm like drinking water or something I'm like are they hearing me slurp you probably heard something that's how sensitive this mic is <laughs> Sorry, but I have to hydrate. And guys, reminder, drink water. Okay, you got to drink a lot of water to stay healthy, more than you think you do. So please drink water now. This is your reminder. From your mother. <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> no, I never wanted to be this. <laughs> No, I don't mind ASMR, but I think of, um, like, if I were to make noises and people heard them, I feel like they would be gross. <laughs> I don't like it. 
<laughs> okay, so Anthony and I, uh, for a little bit of background, since I know you guys so well, I just need to give you our live story. We have known each other for like over 10 years now. Wait, it's been 10 years since I graduated high school this year. That is crazy. Um, but the friendship started in like my sophomore year or something. So we're, I think we're at 12 years. Anyways, um, we made a lot of stuff together, but one of them was a short film that's still on YouTube. It's called Snail's Pace Race. <laughs> it is the most ridiculous thing ever. Uh, it's basically just like a really silly story about like a snail coming to terms with its identity. <laughs> Golly, we made this back in high school. Anyways, it was um, stop motion paper cutouts of snails that we drew. And all of the sound effects of the snails traveling were made by our mouths. <laughs> by Anthony's mouth, more like, because I was so bad at making the sound that he wanted it to be. So we were literally just little Foley artists back in high school. And the sound was... <laughs> but, like, way more. Like, times ten. It was gross. It was so gross. <laughs> And we've looked that up, like, once every two years and just watched it because <laughs> it's ridiculous. And also, uh, it is, oh, gosh, um, our voices at the, I think it's the beginning where we said, uh, snail space race, yay! <laughs> it's just so silly. Uh, yeah, look that up on YouTube if you want to see some glory days of our high school times. Ugh. I also made a stop motion um, paper cutout kind of vi uh, music video because we had this video class in high school that was probably one of the most fun classes I've ever taken. And uh, man, I really want to listen to that song again because I remember listening to it literally like a hundred times in one night to get the timing right. And now I haven't listened to it in about 12 years. <laughs> so it's time to go back to that. I think it was um, by Seawolf, uh, You're a Wolf, or something like that, I think is the song. It's like, you're a wolf, boy, get out of this town. You're a Oh my gosh, Zona, did you look it up? <laughs> oh my gosh, you're the best. Yes. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm embarrassed and glad. Thank you so much for finding that. <laughs> Wow. Oh, golly. I'm like blushing now. Good job. Good job. Just props. Uh, yeah, that's that's something you can do because life is internet now. See, I'm really glad that like the internet was around while I was growing up. This whole like timeline of our lives overlapping with so many amazing things happening, like the advent of the internet and still having, I mean, at my age, I still had a childhood that was very much outdoors instead of being completely inundated. But then I also have memories of playing video games. And I think that's a really special thing. Um, so what was I saying about that? Oh, I'm really glad that the internet wasn't so popular and so outstanding when I was in middle school, because that would have been, like, the most embarrassing time to have any documentation of. I would be so sad to see, like, my emo self being all, like, I don't know, between wearing my Paul Frank sweatshirt every single day with, like, a monkey on the front and having, like, a bun up, but then, like, two strands of hair coming down right here. I don't want that to exist on the internet. <laughs> I guess talking about it on a stream that I'm going to post on YouTube makes it <laughs> last forever. But still, <sighs> there are just some things that shouldn't exist. <laughs> Middle school Anna is one of them. <laughs> I tell James all the time, like, if we had met in middle school especially, we would not be together now. Like, he has always been somewhat the same person. Like, very into games, not so, like, fashion-oriented or anything like that. But also, you know, he really enjoys or appreciates genuine people. He doesn't um, like people who are fake in any way. And in middle school, I was trying to be something all the time, where I was just, like, putting so much effort into belonging and all that stuff, which <laughs> doesn't really work when you have to try that hard. Uh, but <laughs> it's just one of those things where, like, I was between several different styles at all times. Like, goth, hippie are two things that I don't know combine, and I was both. 
<laughs> um, so things like that, like they just, I, I can't imagine him seeing me and being like, yep, want to date her. <laughs> Sorry, checking for Anthony for a second. Oh, cool. Anthony's here. He just parked. So you're going to get a cameo, guys, from one of the creators of Snail's Pace Race. Yay! <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, Zona, you know that song? Yes, it's really good. I enjoy it a lot. Let him in, James. Mm -hmm. The snails are so cute. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Charlie the Unicorn. That was basically the time that it was happening. Lots of middle school stuff is online because I posted it. Oh, good job. Now you have like a memory bank. Anthony, you gotta come on the stream. You, you, you gonna come on the stream? That's the only battery. Oh my gosh, your head. Oh, hello. So Welcome, Anthony. All right, here. The, this is the camera. You look at it. Let's see, we're right here. Where's your head? Right what? Why here. is that the back of your head? What? I'm right here. Oh, because <laughs> it was the back of your head. <laughs> One of them's delayed. Oh, yeah, that's Twitch. That's OBS. So this is us, like, how we see it, and that's, like, 15 seconds or something later. Oh. Uh, so, yeah. Hey, lean into the frame and say hi. This is Anthony. Ooh, ah, pattern. look oh, at that yeah. pattern. Oh yeah. my gosh. Wait, whoa, whoa. Wait, Draw that. On. It's so cool. Wow. Is, there, is it in it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Cool. I forget about it. Sometimes. So he went to a Christmas party so that was 1920s themed, and so he looked up some Art Deco but patterns and had one shaved into the back of his head. How yeah. cool is that? I love it so much. Uh, everybody says hi. <laughs> Uh, oh gosh, goth hippie is definitely a thing. I live in Boulder, which is a hippie town, and we had goth emo, so definitely a thing. <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah, Zona, his hair. It's awesome. <laughs> Lorva, uh, Lorva says, looks dope. <laughs> I Thanks, love it. I Bailey says, yeah, she was. Oh, whoops. Wait while we talk to your displays. Notice flickering mouse during some period. What the heck is happening? So you broke my computer. <laughs> my hair is too cool. <laughs> <laughs> Way too cool. <laughs> it's all taken care of. It's all good. Um, but yeah, everybody says your hair looks super cool. Aww. You don't have any crystals here, do you? I don't own crystals. I used to have an amethyst, but not anymore. I'm sorry. We have I plants. Like have all the we have so many coasters. Why do you have a thousand coasters? <laughs> because Amazon, um, well, uh, our packages went clothes. missing. Yeah. So our, guys, story time. So our packages went missing. We ordered like three things at a time and You're then we, them. like, they just didn't show up for about a week. One of those things was this webcam. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we were like, Amazon, what the heck? And they were like, do you want a refund or do you want to reorder? And um, so we reordered and then did, like, about a week later yeah, one of our neighbors said oh wait this showed up at our place so we we're like oh dang it so uh we got the stuff from the neighbor so we immediately had all of our stuff which is the webcam and stuff like that or wait no actually so we contacted amazon and we uh said it's missing and then reordered and then they are you telling the same story over me Oh, the compass. Okay, sorry. Anyways, sorry. Super distracted. So, uh, the Amazon stuff that we reordered came first, and then the neighbor said that they had the stuff, and then we contacted Amazon, and they said, just keep it. So, basically, we have all of the same stuff twice over, except for one of the orders, um, because it was out of stock when we wanted to reorder with Amazon. Anyway, so I've got two webcams, two sets of coasters, uh, two <laughs> copies of Men in Black Blu-ray <laughs> edition. <laughs> so I don't know what to do with them. Um, we're still deciding like whether to sell them or if we could use some of them. Um, anyways, it's a weird thing. I definitely don't take advantage of that. I am not advocating like fraud on Amazon's part at all. But it was a genuine, like, whoopsie-daisy because our neighbors had withheld our stuff for so long. <laughs> I don't know. Goodbye. Anyways. Oh, wait. Give me a hug. I'm going to say bye to Anthony. Cha-cha. You got both your cameras and all the batteries? Okay. Um, I think I'm going to buy a Sony A5100. So if you know anything about that, tell me. I don't. 
Not off the top of my head. Yeah, you use I shaved that right? part away. <laughs> All the information's gone. All right. Thank you. All right. Yeah, See have so much later. fun with shooting crystals. That's awesome. Reminder to stretch. Stretch, everybody. Until the last two. Yeah, I think so. Pretty All the battery things, yeah. Going over to Sammy and Rosie's to photograph their crystals, because they what? have some. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Uh, what are you doing afterward? Uh, Ash is coming over to Sammy and Rosie's, and we'll probably play this video game on Switch called Overwatch? Gree. Overwatch? G-R-I-S. Yeah, that's so pretty. Oh my that's gosh, I keep seeing ads for it. It's so beautiful. And uh, after that, I'll probably drive back home with Ashley to grab shop. Gross. Okay, bye. All right, have fun. Love you. Have good night. Do you want to say stuff. hi to the stream? No. Oh, come on. Oh. The spider's going to fit in. Yeah. Let's go. I'll be back in one second. Sorry. Come on, say hi. All right, James is gonna say hi. Ooh, he's making his first appearance. Oh, the camera's snap. up here. There you go. And then he waves with his hand and says, hi. Where am I looking? Over there. Right there. <laughs> James says hi, everybody. Yeah, how's it going? <laughs> Do you want to draw on the piece at all? Is there something that's bugging you? Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's styluses up there. I think it's really cute. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, snap. Hi, James. There's a face. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Look at that face. Oh, he's adorable. <laughs> he hates it. <laughs> I think it's really cute. Oh, this piece? Yeah, yeah. I enjoy it, but if you can... I don't know. I think this guy is the one that's bugging me a little bit more than everybody else, but that's just me. I don't know. It looks kind of spiky on the top, which is a little less cute. As far as like the shapes he's forming, more of a triangle on the top. Right? It's because the idea was that his fur is going toward the balloon because of static. But oh. Is yeah. that not reading? Uh, I don't think that's reading, um, but you should definitely play with it. It's a cute concept. I wonder if it would read, like, if people, when they see the pattern, would immediately be like, oh, it's static. <coughs> oh, no, I killed her. <laughs> um... <laughs> I think that I could totally draw it without the static hair, and it would be fine anyway. Like, overall, his shapes are reading pretty well, right? Yeah, I think they're all reading. Okay, cool. Then, yeah, just working on it. All right. <laughs> Everybody says hi. So you all right, I am now off them. camera again. But hi, everyone who's in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Get back in the chat. I have to go back to my cave. <laughs> Wait, give me a hug. Love you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Walkie duck. Let's get back to work. Now that I've gotten everybody on the stream, next is going to be my entire family. It's going to be great. <laughs> and then you guys will make guest appearances, right? You're going to head up to Portland. It's going to be great. <laughs> so excited. It's a giant collaboration. All right, let's get back into it. You guys are the best. I still can't believe you found Snail's Pace Race. I forgot to tell Anthony. I should have told him that while he was here. Uh, he would have made the noise with his mouth. <laughs> so gross. Oh, so good. <laughs> Maybe add lightning bolts to read as static? Oh my gosh, that's a cute idea. And I already have a yellow that I'm using, so that could be a nice little addition. Did I, uh, I don't know if you heard if you were on in time, but um, I'm working on some cover uh, sketches for Harry Potter <laughs> just to add to my portfolio. Um, but like, it's one of the most fun things I've allowed myself to do in a while where I feel like, oh, I'm living the dream. Just imagine if JK Rowling was like, yes, can you just design the next cover for Harry Potter? And like, I'm just going with Sorcerer's Stone because why not start at the beginning, right? <laughs> but how cool. I just love it so much. It's a lot of pressure, but it's really fun. <laughs> I has to head out to help with dinner. If you're still streaming when I finish, I'll pop in. Otherwise, I'll catch you later. Bye, Zona! Have a really great night, and thank you so much for joining. It was really fun to talk to you every night. <laughs> Let's just stream every night. Have a meeting. <laughs> oh, you're rereading Harry Potter right now? Oh, yes. So good. The illustrated versions that you have, it's so good. I like The second one is my favorite because on the inside, there's... um 
this giant layout of the greenhouses and that is like one of my favorite illustrations it's so beautiful i love it um i can't remember if i know who did the illustrations for that um, everybody's saying bye bye zona <laughs> so um one of the illustrators the one who did the the series of harry potter that i have here one second so we've got one of the complete series here it's not the original but it's these ones that have like hogwarts on the spine they're really beautifully done um they were apparently done by an artist named kazoo and my mentor lee white was uh I think he was it was their connection was they had classes together or something he did a really great job i think they're beautiful um but this is one of the things that i discussed with lee when uh doing this project is what i want them to turn out like lee said that this isn't his usual style of doing stuff that he was very inspired by mary grand prix who did the first covers of the original books and, um, like, that's totally cool. You can be inspired, obviously. Oh, there we go. Oh, so many books. Um, obviously you can be inspired and that's totally cool, but do I want to be that? Do I want to be, like, my take on Mary Grand Prix's take on Harry Potter? Or do I want to make it completely original and very unique? And I think it's necessary to be unique because there are so many covers for the Harry Potter books. If you guys haven't seen the uh, international copies, just like Google Harry Potter covers and you will see so many, <laughs> just so many. Some of them definitely uh, different in quality <laughs> and some are just drop dead gorgeous. So uh, they're a lot of ways to take it, whether you're doing like literal scenes from the book or trying to inspire the kind of feeling of magic that the books inspire. I think I'm going down that route instead of literal scenes. Um, I was concentrating in my first pass on kind of trying to capture the, the, the transition of Harry's life where he goes from this very regimented and abusive household and going into this magical world where he feels completely surrounded by people who know and love him and comforted and obviously just wowed by the magic. <laughs> so um, I do love that Kazoo ch eh, chose the moment of going down diagonally with Hagrid for the first book's cover. I think that's a really good call because it is the literal transition from his world into this magical world. And obviously us being muggles, <laughs> not me, <laughs> no, but us being muggles, we, uh, have that same reaction as Harry does. It's not assumed that there's magic in the world. So showing it in any way, kind of capturing the magic is the goal of any cover. It's just to get that feeling across. Like, this is different. This is cool. Uh, so now I got a cool postcard when I went to BookCon that was a Whomping Willow. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I'm distracted by this HP chat. It's so beautiful. <laughs> they're so beautiful there's so many amazing ones i think fobs did a cool comic style of them and i love looking at them fobs is one of my favorites i was just talking to lee about her because she just like i think it's her i'm not sure because fobs is you know neutral but um i absolutely love their work and i want all of their stuff they've done uh comics of what was it like the cimmerillion lord of the rings kind of uh stories and that's like some of my favorite stuff I've seen. It's so beautiful. If you guys don't know Fobs, look it up. Good stuff. <laughs> Psh, I'm definitely a witch. <laughs> it's a her, I believe. Okay, good. <laughs> this is what one of my friends says. Uh, Ashley Kincannon is also an artist who uh, absolutely loves Fobs, and she would talk to me about her all the time. Um, but we were never quite sure. <laughs> but obviously, we're all witches here, right? Or magical beings of some sort if you could be a magical creature what would you be because i know that there is um a question on the pottermore test of what would you want to study of all the magical creatures that kind of thing and i want to know like if you had the choice to be one if you were like option to be a mermaid versus a centaur or uh i guess a werewolf is kind of a 
dangerous thing to wish for because <laughs> my goodness they made it so stigmatized I mean she did on purpose it's an allegory but yeah <laughs> Ravenclaw Pukwudgie oh my gosh that's an interesting mixture <laughs> well oh I mean if you're thinking creature wise but I mean if you're those two houses because Ravenclaw is supposed to be like you know the intelligent one the know-it-all and then the Pukwudgie I feel like is most equivalent to Hufflepuff where it's a little bit more jovial <laughs> and more humanized and you know because obviously a human was the founder for it <laughs> human muggle sorry or nomad, as it is in America. <laughs> I want to be a Niffler. Oh my gosh, that would be so great. Oh, the Thunderbird. <gasps> I love the moment of the Thunderbird. I think they made that design look so cool. I tried making fan art of the Thunderbird after I saw the first Fantastic Beast movie, and I was like, it's not doing any justice to the actual design that they had, because it was so good. <laughs> oh, so pretty. So very pretty. Oh, and... I actually would love to take another uh, pass at that because I feel like, you know, every once in a while your skills up a little bit and uh, this year I feel like my skills have completely changed. So um, taking another pass at something that would be like challenging, like I had this whole concept where it's, you know, this crazy thunderstorm above the nest of the Thunderbird and then it's like glowing little chicks are coming out of eggs and stuff like that and Newt's there in the middle of it all and being like, hmm. Um, but that <laughs> it's kind of hard to pull off in rendering, so I would have to figure out a way to uh, make it into the style that I'm working at now, which would be a fun challenge. One challenge at a time, Anna. Okay, I'm already doing a Harry Potter book cover, and that is like the biggest challenge, so <sighs> gotta just deal with that first. <laughs> Although having a mentor who does uh, book covers, he's literally like teaching a book cover class over next summer, I believe. It helps a lot. <laughs> He's helped so much in every way. And he also helps me calibrate, like, what's good enough, where it's like, okay, we can call this one. And then other ones, he's like, maybe you should take another pass, because I feel like there's a stronger idea out there. Uh, Zona, you are those two houses. Took the quizzes. Heck yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, those are great houses, obviously. I love all the houses. I do think that uh, Slytherin gets a bad rap and all that stuff, but um, it does, to me at least, tell you a bit about the person when you know their houses, where it's like, okay, I have a better idea of who you are in Arizona. <laughs> and that's really cool. I, it's like a modern way to take personality tests, <laughs> which I found some people put a lot of stock in. I told somebody I was an ENFP on the Myers-Briggs test, and they were like, oh, you're my best friend. I know exactly who you are. And I was like, whoa, okay, well, <laughs> don't know if you could put that much stock into it, but cool. I mean, I'm glad you feel like you're closer to me now. <laughs> Have you seen the international posters for this the that movie? Which movie? Is it the first Fantastic Beasts? Oh, I need to see that. They're glorious. Look up the Chinese posters for them. Ah, I'm a Slytherin and horned serpent oh my gosh so you're very intelligent and very sly about it maybe big ambitions for the world <laughs> might be an evil genius i don't know <laughs> that's awesome though <laughs> okay so it was chinese uh chunies i said um chunlis oh my gosh that'll be my next pattern chunlis how can i make it work anyways sorry tangent uh, <laughs> INFP, excellent. Yeah, you're basically almost the same. Uh, what was that one? It's not the dictator, right? I, I, they have, like, little nicknames for them or whatever. Uh, I can't remember any of them now. Um, but James is an INFJ, which is supposedly the rarest of the personality types. It's supposed to be, like, this recluse who's very, um curious about everything and wants to like solve the puzzles of the world that kind of thing which is very him <laughs> uh really should go help make dinner go go for it <laughs> uh, okay so chinese posters and this is for uh i just looked up chinese posters for fantastic beasts Oh my gosh. 
Oh my gosh. <gasps> that is so cool. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh, he's over a mountain. Oh, it's so mythical. That is so cool. Oh, the Akami. Yeah, see, I need more of this kind of advertising. Don't you feel like that? Like, when you see a really successful advertising campaign, you're just like, why doesn't everybody do stuff that cool? Like, hot dang. That is so beautiful. And I mean, it calls back to, like, the traditions of the country where it looks very traditional. And that is all you ever wanted, right? Oh my gosh, that's so cool. And they're all holding them. Oh, I love it. I just want someday to make a franchise that creates stuff like this. Like, how cool would that be? To just see something so beautiful come out of your ideas. Ah, oh, I love it. Oh, man. Oh, Mediator. That's a great one. I love Mediators. <laughs> uh, where they buy Zong Chun, Ravenclaw, Thunderbird, INFJ. <laughs> uh, the style is amazing. I wish we had them in the US. The long one is amazing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That is too cool. This is for Crimes of Grindelwald, so they continued it to the second movie. Okay, come on. They are up in the game here. We need more better advertising. That is so cool. I loved this creature, by the way. It was done so beautifully in that movie. And, like, the the face of it was very um, not traditional, where you could see, like, okay, so normal like big cat faces or whatever they could make it very generic looking very easily and this face to me i remember this creature specific face where it's like i look at that and i see what they were going for it's one of the things that i love so much about these movies in particular is they stuck really closely for a lot of the designs to what jk actually drew as like little sketches and stuff which makes them just the loopiest fun it, oh gosh no my face is over them here i have to drag this over um, just, like, they have a whimsicality that, like, artists don't always bring to things. Sometimes they take the, these things too seriously, and I just love seeing such original designs. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. I mean, look at that thing. Come on. But yeah, this guy, I think, was my favorite part of the second movie. So beautiful. Although the, um... I know the name of this. I know the name of this creature, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, not Festival. Oh my gosh, what am I thinking of? Anyways, this guy. Super, super cool looking in the movie too. I loved it. My favorite times in all the movies is just when they're with the creatures. That's by far my favorite. Oh my gosh, they're all together. Oh, that is so cool. No, screw you. Okay. And they're all in a peach tree. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I was just talking with James about this. When you see advertising done really, really well, it can make you like frustrated with all of the other advertisements. When you see ones that are just like, you're lazy. Like, I can tell you're lazy by how you're just approaching your audience. You think we're just dumb or something. I don't know. Like, you think this is going to sell us stuff? No, it's not. <laughs> Uh, and yet when you see a really good advertisement, like one of my favorite advertisements of all time is the travel organ campaign that they came out with like last year. And it was, um, the theme was slightly exaggerated and they made it look exactly like a Ghibli film. And they did it through a studio that James and I love. I think that was Sun Creature Studio, right, James? And, uh, it was one of the best shorts you could possibly find and it was an advertisement for a state just like come here come travel here because it's magical here it's my favorite thing if you guys look that up that is much more worth snail than snail space race like that is a actually genuinely good thing to watch <laughs> and it'll make you sour on all other advertisements trust me <laughs> the other strong one from last year was isle of dogs yeah i love that movie their Instagram ads were so good. Oh, I need to look at... Here, one second. This is a surprise for you guys. If I can find it. Yeah. yeah. So, I've been talking about my uh, mentor a lot, Lee White. If you guys aren't familiar with his work, uh, here it is. 
in a poster for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. What? Yes, he got to work on the official ad campaign for Fantastic Beasts, and I'm just like... So happy about that. I love it so much. And you can see his work is super whimsical and colorful and just like tells a story without getting like caught up in rendering. And that is definitely a push that I'm trying to kind of go his direction with. He also has a career that is highly enviable. So <laughs> uh, I, I think he's just going to continue to be more and more successful. I really want him to win like all the awards, Caldecott's, everything. He deserves it all. So... Anyways, I am so proud that he got to work on this in particular. He just, like, sent me an early version, like, oh, hey, look what I got to work on. And I was just like, what? This is amazing. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, I've done my duty of spreading the HP illustration love. I must help make the food. Please, go for it. <laughs> oh, no, I'm so sorry. I kept you waiting. <laughs> I'm the worst person. <laughs> Go make food. Have fun. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Oh, yes. This is a really beautiful style. And if you uh, know any of his work, like, it all is very consistently high quality and beautiful. So if you want some good children's books, look up his stuff. Uh, and in the future, he is definitely going to start writing for himself. So I look forward to that like nobody's business because I know that he... He thinks in a way that I I want to read his thoughts, <laughs> like, in every form. Um, he's also a teacher at SVS. If you guys are at all interested in making children's books, I'd highly recommend uh, taking classes from them because they are definitely the best information for your book that you can find for children's book illustration information. And I have taught on that website. I'm not trying to sell it for... Uh, for my purposes at all, but it's like genuinely a really great website. Um, but I am going to teach a live class this summer there and I'm so excited about that. It's going to be about character design and I'm just like, so like, I love teaching. I really, really love it. It's very similar to this actually, kind of, I get the same vibe where, um, at least answering questions for the residency, like it feels like you're giving somebody something they can use and there's no better feeling <laughs> than like, here's something useful to you. Take it and go. <laughs> you know, like, it's like giving somebody a gift. It's just uh, not going to clutter up their apartment. <laughs> it's going to clutter up their brain. <laughs> but no, it's the best. And I need to get James into teaching. Everybody pressure him. Teach James, teach. Teach James, teach. Because he's got a lot of great information that just needs to uh, be disseminated and given to the crowds. I feel like he would teach things that are universally, like, wanted. Um, I'm definitely going down a much more specific road now uh, with the children's book illustration. Um, even though a lot of the skill sets fit other careers, like art careers, he's in uh, character design, or character, yeah, character design for animation. Sorry, I was, like, blanking for a second. Am I using the right words? Uh, but... That kind of thing, like animation, I think is the most, like, f it fills every skill set for anything artistic. Like, you need to know basically the skill set for graphic design, for storyboarding, for uh, illustration. Like, all of those make a great animator. Or, I mean, character designer for animator. Animation. Again, I admire everybody who works in animation so much in any way. All right, we're almost through the leave portion. Sorry, I've been uh, having hangups, like talking to my friends and my husband and all that. Oh, I'm starting to get hungry too. What time is it? 6.23, I shouldn't be hungry yet. What is this stomach? Oh my gosh, what if streaming like actually burns calories? That would be awesome. I am so down for that. I'll stream every day. <laughs> I need to exercise more. This is what I know. I saw this video. Okay, this is a little bit gross, but I saw a video on Facebook about um, technology that they're using to clear blood clots. And then, of course, they're like, don't smoke, don't drink, lose weight if you can. That's how you prevent blood clots. 
And I am extremely squeamish about anything to do with veins. So I'm like, of course, if I have an enemy in this life, it'll be blood clots. Of course. That's just like poetic how my enemy would find me like that. So I just, you know, every day I feel this like, okay, I need to lose weight. I need to lose weight. And I need to do it this year. This is my ultimatum. Like this time next year, if I haven't lost like... I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's hard to set a number because I don't want to, like, lower highball myself. But if I haven't lost a significant portion of my body weight, then I need to, I need to, like, take such dramatic measures. I need to, like, have a rehab for weight loss or something. <laughs> but it'll happen someday. I feel like everybody has that, like, I need to make this a priority in my life kind of feeling for one thing or another. And that's just mine. It's my battle. <laughs> I did 3D animation for a while and now I'm doing 2D, Bailey says but I only finished one 3D animation short film for school, oh my gosh doing any short film animation is a huge thing, so great job for that uh, I did I think one production that never got finished in college uh, and it was a 2D animation and I, I was head of backgrounds for that one so we did finish the backgrounds and then I graduated <laughs> so nothing else got done but um no, it's, it's wonderful to work with a team and actually get some kind of uh, experience that feels like you're like living as closely as you can to what you would when you graduate, where you're like, okay, let's pretend that this is real life for a second and just like practice, just practice. It's such a simple thing, but it pays off hugely once you graduate. Okay, I just thought of something again with the HP or <laughs> Harry Potter subject. If you guys, how should I word this? If you guys had a favorite, uh, or if you could only have one spell from the magical world, what would you choose? Like, you're a muggle otherwise, but you have one spell that works. What would you want? Bailey says, we only had two people and our teacher gave us six months. Two people is not enough. Oh my gosh. That is like torture. How do you, what? No. I think we had like 30 people, but I mean, we were doing it well. I guess you can have like a period of, or like a class that is production, but a lot of people just did so much work in their free time and that was still not enough. Like, how would you do that with two people? That's not possible. But I feel like you have like a second of animation and <laughs> just be like, oh, that's all we could get done. Sorry. <laughs> oh, well, good job. I mean, <laughs> working under extreme restraints is also really good practice for the real world because sometimes, oof, it gets tight, man. It gets real tight. <laughs> oh my gosh. I cannot imagine doing it. Well, especially a 3D one. Like, 3D productions... There are so many things that can go wrong. I remember uh, hearing like horror stories from the 3D side of our school where, you know, if there's a computer hiccup of some sort, that can set you back so much just because of like things outside your control. Um, but I think there are a lot of factors and productions that can make them run smoothly or not smoothly. I remember some of uh, my friends worked on, and actually, James, yeah, you worked on uh, one of the productions, didn't you, for 3D? Uh, some of the concept art for it. And that one, they had such a hang-up about what designs they could use because some of the character animators were like, oh, that design is too far out there. We can't actually animate that. So the concept artist would go back to the drawing board and then it just got more and more generic looking instead of, like, really cool and pushing the edge. But, I mean... Trying to make it practical is a thing, but also redesigning seven times, that's just a waste of time. Like, you should go into a production class having those designs nailed down. And just knowing, like, this is what we're working with. There is no changing it or going back to the drawing board. We're just going straight forward from here. At least in my opinion, that's how I would run a production. Oh my gosh. It ended up being four minutes. Four minutes of animation. That is a long time. On YouTube with the credits, you got to put a, a link in the chat because I want to see that for sure. Uh, that's true. We used Maya and it crashed at least twice every day. Oh, Maya. 
we also used Maya at, uh, it was the Art Institute of Portland I came from, and, uh, I loved modeling. I basically hated everything else. Um, animation I didn't even get towards because they had, you know, like, a system where you had to get up and up and up in your skill set. Like, once you're done with modeling, you go into lighting. Once you're done with lighting, you go into, like, rendering or whatever's next. Basically, I just did modeling, and, uh... It was really fun. I actually, like, enjoyed it, but I never considered it as my main career because I just loved, you know, the other stuff too much. The 2D stuff is so direct in its payoff. I feel like it takes a lot longer to get a payoff in 3D world. And I'm sure that people who do it for a living get a lot faster at it, but, like, I just wasn't there. And I had been drawing for all my life, so I already felt like I was kind of there with it. I'd still love to learn ZBrush or something like that because sculpting is a like a side hobby I do, um, like physical sculpting. I actually have like this little, ooh, made this little maquette guy of like a pumpkin headed witch dude girl thing. I don't know what it is, but um, I still haven't finished him. His head became so heavy that I had to use this like stand to keep him up. And he's kind of warped as he stood there, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I love sculpting and I want to keep doing it. Just, it like gives your brain a break sometimes to be like, okay, this is a totally different medium. And it's like creating for the first time again, where you're just like, oh, refreshed. It's awesome. So if uh, ZBrush could do that without me having to pay for clay, why not? <laughs> be awesome. Oh my gosh. It looks so cool. Yay, you sent me a link. Okay, I will watch that for sure. Isn't YouTube amazing? You can just like connect like that. Oh my gosh. I like you a waffle lot. That's so cute. Okay, I won't watch the whole thing right now, but that is such a cute name. <laughs> I can't wait to watch that because I just, I love student production, seeing what people come up with when they're like, hey, you're studying stuff, and, like, here are restrictions for sure, but also here's what you want to create, and you aren't burdened by the expectations of the industry quite yet, stuff like that. Like, I know a lot of people who have gone into certain things and lost kind of a spark of what they wanted to do. It's really hard sometimes to zoom out and figure out, like, okay, what did I want to do? It's like, when you're a kid and you're dreaming big and now you look at yourself and you're like, am I living the life that that kid wanted me to live? I'm not sure. Um, so, you know, zooming out and stuff like that is really good. And also looking back, I'm sure you will greatly appreciate that production and be like, oh my gosh, look what we did. We were so young back then <laughs> and we only had six months and there were only two of us. What was that teacher thinking? <laughs> I don't understand. And then you call them up and you harass them, because what the heck? That's just not fair. <laughs> Especially when you have other classes and are doing other things with your life, and they're just like, mm, six months, two of you. That's insane. <laughs> and for the HP question, I'd want to have Wingardium Leviosa. Oh my gosh, that's a great one. Make everything levitate just freak people out. <laughs> James and I have actually talked about this. Uh, I think we both agree that Accio would be ours uh, because, I mean, bringing stuff to you, pretty sweet. Although I'm sure there's some kind of thing out there where you can, like, replicate food or something. I guess Aguamenti, you could always have water with you. That'd be sweet. Um, but it also just depends on what you'd use it for. It's also kind of like this question that was... Um, Something like, if you had a superpower, what would you want it to be? And that kind of reflects, would you use it as a superhero? Would you become, like, a hero with that power? Is there pressure to become something when you have this power? Or would you just use it as an everyday thing where you're like, okay, I just want to, uh, I want to, you know, fly over to work instead of using the train. And I don't want to save anyone if I see they're in trouble, that kind of thing. But then, you know, Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility. What do you believe? I don't know. I really liked the movie uh, Chronicle for that. For, like, a different perspective on what people would use powers for. 
if they had them, realistically. The ending was a little weird, but the entire uh, lead up to it felt like it was pretty realistic and I liked it. Now I am kind of getting into the painting of these raccoons for real. I want to make sure that the lines or the outlines of things have a nice brush stroke to them. So I'm turning off the the sketch lines that I had. I'm just going to work on the silhouettes a little bit and see what kind of pleasing shapes I can make on them, of them, of that, them, yes. <laughs> I'll probably go for um, another like 10 or 20 minutes, something like that, and then I'll probably make dinner like Zona. <laughs> By the way, where are you guys from, like, time zone-wise? How about just post your time zones in the chat or something? Because I'm very curious what hour everybody's at. Right now it is 6.35 where I am. PM. I would not be doing this 6.35 AM. That would just be insane. <laughs> I'm definitely not a morning person. James can attest to that. <laughs> it takes me, like, 30 minutes to get out of bed. Sometimes I like these little break off shapes. Basically my only goal right now is just to create pleasing shapes, which makes like compartmentalizing what your goal is with a certain like mode of illustration makes it much easier. When I'm just like, all I need to do is figure out the shapes right now, then it's very simple as opposed to like, I need to worry about the colors and the values and the design and all this stuff. like. Just shapes. It's fine. It's making my brain happy. <laughs> Pacific time. Okay, awesome. You're in the Bay Area. So it's also 6.30 where you are. That's awesome. And then Central Time, you're two hours before us, I believe. So, uh, right? I think that's the same time zone that Lee is in. So you would be 8.30? Did I do that right? <laughs> <laughs> I do not know. But yeah, um, I'm super grateful that you guys tune in at all times. Thank you for being here. I'm just hanging out. And let me know if you want to see anything in particular or have, uh, like, you know, questions about certain techniques or anything like that. You, you just let me know and I will gladly show you all the things. Usually after this stage, I lock the pixels and then color inside of the shapes. There's a car with blinking lights outside. It's kind of distracting me. Oh, that's on the earlier. So yeah, it's 8.30 where you are. Awesome. So did you already have dinner? I guess so. Or, or not. I don't know. I'm not judging. <laughs> So uh, James and I are probably going to move this year, and so in my free time I am looking up apartments and like, I mean, just for my own dream sake, I look up houses every once in a while because I'm kind of obsessed with getting a house. Um, we're definitely not there financially yet, but it is such a dream that like, Every once in a while you just need to escape from things, and so I go on Redfin or Zillow and I escape that way. <laughs> and uh, it's really fun to look at the houses. I think the most fun is when you see a house that you could actually possibly afford in like the next five years or ten years, something like that. I mean, ten years. That sounds so sad to me. I want it like now, but you can't always get what you want. Um, you know what my main reason though is for having a house other than, you know, just feeling that nesting intuition where I'm like, I need to make my, my place. I need to stay and be comfortable. Um, 
I really need a dog, <laughs> like, really, really badly. And the only things that are keeping us from that are obviously, like, finances. you got to make sure you can take care of them very well. And I will be the best dog owner, I promise you. Uh, and also having enough room for them to just live happily. And to me, that means a yard. I know some people who have dogs in apartments and uh, varying breeds and all that stuff. And I know some of them are more comfortable than others. But I personally need a yard for a dog to happen. And um, it's just something that, like, I'm dying for, man. I, I grew up with pets. And ever since uh, I moved out of my parents' home... Well, Anthony had kittens for a while. But uh, we... In, or James and I have not had pets. I am just dying for them. Dying. Ugh. Every day I feel like I just come home and I want that, like, kind of... Or I don't come home. I work from home, so, you know. But I wake up and I'm like, I want that energy in the house where it's it's something alive and, like, waiting for you and loving and that I can pet and give a really, really good home. Because I'm sure there's some animal out there who really needs a good home and I could give it that. And I just set up a GoFundMe where people, like, pay all the vet bills and stuff, but I, I care for the animal. <laughs> I'd be down for that. I can't remember what this one looks like. It's so messy. There we go. Oh, you had dinner a few hours ago. Okay, good for you. I'm glad you're eating. <laughs> also, remember to drink, people. Let's drink together. Haha. -ha. Oh, water is life. So good. Especially when you're talking. So important. It's actually the advice that Sid gave to me when I uh, was going for the interviews for the residency. She said, just drink water. And I was like, that's the best advice ever because <laughs> I was talking for eight hours straight and I don't know if I could have said another word if I hadn't drank as much water. Although, of course, I then had to go to the bathroom a lot, but it's beside the point. <laughs> that's the only reason you've been looking for places to... Dogs are amazing. Apparently, dogs are the only motivation you need to get a house. <laughs> it's just like, oh, uh, do you need to do something with your life? Okay, just want a dog, and then you'll get there. <laughs> I totally feel that. Uh, I want a dog so badly. Uh, James and I are already so desperate that we have our, basically our dog picked out already. Uh, we are going to have a corgi, and his name is going to be Mochi. And I will train him so well. Uh, I'm going to have him heal, I'm going to have him, you know, come, stay, sit, all that jazz. It's going to be great. But I actually, I want to go a step further. Um, this comes out of having a history of my parents having dogs that were not trained. <laughs> so I don't know, um, I mean, I know a bit about training because I have just like looked up YouTube videos and stuff, but I haven't had individual experiences where I've turned, trained a dog for a long period of time. And, uh, I mean, my experience with my mom's, uh, dachshund was that in the first, like, few weeks that we had him, I was trying to train him as much as possible before I had to go back to school. And he learned super fast. He was very impressive. Like, I already had him sitting and staying and stuff like that by the time that I had to go back. And then, of course, like, a few weeks without me training him and it was all gone. So, um, but I want if possible, to get, like, a service-grade animal. <laughs> like, as in, I want to train him so well that he could be a service dog. And uh, just, you know, be so well-behaved and charming that he can help others and be around children and be around dogs and make them feel, like, comfortable and better and all that stuff. <laughs> you should teach him the trust fall. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That would be great. <laughs> just fall into my arms. I mean, they have such long backs. <laughs> I'd be worried about breaking them. Uh, James's aunt was getting rid of a few things when uh, we went there for Christmas, and one of them was this. It's a little corgi statue. <laughs> they had a corgi as well. James said he was the absolute best corgi. Got the butt and everything. Oh, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I never got to meet him. He passed away before my time. But... Uh, I want him, you know? Little Ricky the Corgi. But we're gonna have Mochi and he's gonna live on in Ricky's honor. So good. They're all good boys. 
I also really want a cat because I uh, grew up with a cat. My cat named Vicious, and he was the best, the sweetest, this just bundle of cuddle boy, and he was so good. When I would come home from school, he would run across the cul-de-sac to me, and I would be like, Vichy! And he would literally, like, run at me with his tail straight up in the air, which is a sign of them being happy, and I'm just like, my heart. And I would pet him, and he would walk in with me, and then I'd set down all my stuff, and, like, he would curl up on my bed with me. It was just so cute. That boy, oh, he gave me life. But he, I had since a very young age, so unfortunately he passed, but, you know, they all got across the Rainbow Bridge sometime. That's the worst part about animals, is just their lifespans are not long enough. Not nearly long enough. Yeah, you like the statue. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> Alright, let's turn off these. Alright, I'm gonna put in some like really loose lines on top of this, and then we can throw it on the big one. Uh to just see what it looks like all together and then I'm gonna go make dinner and I will say peace out. Oh, by the way, I posted all of the previous um, streams to my YouTube channel, so if you guys wanna go back and like see anything, listen to anything, uh, have yourselves read aloud, <laughs> anything like that, I would um, highly recommend just go checking it out. And apparently, uh, James actually pointed this out. There was, when I had um, this thing up, I didn't have the audio connected to this scene in OBS. So I was talking behind it and no audio was being like recorded or streamed. So that was great. <laughs> but oh well, you know, you live, you learn. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just do zoop, like super quick lines just to imply not really. Um, not the final lines. Beep, 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 beep. Of course I say that and then I get caught up in all the lines. I'm also going to offset this before I put it on the big one just to see if uh, we can make things join up a little bit better. This is a great practice for me because sometimes I get like, especially if I'm working on it for like an hour or two like this, I get caught up on stuff. So trying to do like a speed run of rendering is good for me. I say that and then I stop. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out where next. Here, let's start up here. It's mandatory to make noises like that. I added these bows just to be little cute things. Cause they're adorable. Must go faster, must go faster. Personal challenge. Okay, I think. Is that a line? Oh, yeah, it is. I'm not gonna go right between. Okay, whatever. Okay, now I'm gonna do the leaf lines. Oh, I also wanna change the colors of the leaves real quick. Almost there, guys. Ta-da! Okay. Uh, 
that next I want to lock the pixels real quick and color in just a little bit. Bristle bomb. These are the plants. I'm going to pick like three different colors. So we've got one that's already on there. So two is going to be slightly lighter and slightly more yellow. And I'm just going to brush over some of this stuff real randomly. Oops, I got a bug. Some of them I'm going to do a lot, some of them I'm just going to do a little. And remember there's going to be a third color, so I don't want to take up too much room with this one. Okay, and then third color. See, already that adds a little bit of variation, and I love it. Gonna go slightly more saturated and a little bit more blue. And slightly darker, it looks like. Also add a little bit of orange to these leaves because I do feel like the uh, the pink red is a little bit isolated so I'd love to bring a really warm tone in there and just have it uh, kind of act as a conduit for the colors yeah sure okay let's just see how that works and if I hate it then no worries I'm gonna actually do another layer and clip it to this just so I could turn it on and off and see if I like it or not. It's a little too saturated for me. to be on all of them. I just want to have a good smattering to balance it out. Okay. I do feel like it livens it up just by like blurring my eyes and seeing it. Um, however, I do wonder if it's the right color. I might make it a little bit more reddish, which is a great reason to have this clipping mask thing. So I'm going to actually delete that. When I have this layer selected, if I do a mask, or I mean a adjustment layer, then I can have it just affect that area, so it makes the mask automatically. So I can change this color. James says he likes it, I must be onto something. Now do you like it when it's slightly more reddish? I think I do. Slightly more reddish, like it's still orangey, but it's on the red side of orange. Yeah, I like that. Alright, boom. We made some uh, practical changes. Now I'm going to do the... I'm going to actually collapse this because I like it that much. And then I'm going to lock the pixels of the raccoon layer and I'm just going to like paint a few sparse details in here just to make them all feel a little bit loved before we say adios muchachos next time I'm gonna have to get music recommendations from you guys so that I can uh, hook myself up get some good music blasting in these ears Like I said, I love my music, but I'm always looking for new stuff. Always, always. Okay, let's see here. Looking good, looking good. The balloons, I will do more um, overlappy stuff when we get 
there next time. I want to do something fun with this balloon. I feel like it's the odd man out. That's okay for now. Okay. I think we're pretty good. Let's turn off these lines and see how we're doing. Not the worst. I mean, it's roughly in there, obviously, but um, actually one thing I that's just slightly bugging me is their eyes aren't all indicated with yellow. <laughs> I know it's super minor, but I want it. I won't sit. Just because some of them are and some of them aren't. Okay, cool. And that guy's all sleepy, so. There we go. That's the true balance. Probably going to get rid of this leaf. Because why is everything overlapping on that leaf? It's fine. It's fine. I'm really digging the leaves. I think we'll get there with the uh, raccoons where it's going to have more color variation inside of them. And the bugs. The bugs are going to be really fun to put in because they're just like a little pop of color and like fun. Okay, so uh, let us duplicate this uh, group and then collapse it. Control E and then control and clicking the thumbnail completely selects everything. I'm going to define pattern, blah, blah, blah. And then FF to get out of full screen mode. I'm going to create a new layer, edit, fill, pattern, and then go to the newest. Moment of truth. All right. I am digging that. I actually really like that. I think the plants add a lot of flow and fun to it. Um, also, not having the lines be like super rigid makes it feel a little bit more um, nuanced. Like having the raccoons without that harsh line around them, I feel like it makes it, it feel a little bit more sophisticated. Obviously, that's what I want. Super sophisticated. Ugh. But, <laughs> you know, I just, I want it to look good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this, you guys. I think it's coming along nicely. I still want to uh, work on it, obviously. This will be a three streamer, I think, to completely finish it. Um, there's not a lot much to do. It's just adding lines to the raccoons and then maybe making a few color variation things and cleaning up the balloons. Plus the balloons, I need them to feel very transparent. So that's going to be a next step too. Bailey says, it looks so cute. I love the style you used. Thank you. Uh, Bailey, I don't know if you saw the previous one, but this one is uh, the style that I'm kind of going for. It might be a little bit tighter than this because this one's super, super simple. I keep doing that. Zoom, zoom, zoom. There we go. Um, this one's very, very simple, and I do love it for it, but I want, uh, I want every piece to kind of find its way. There's no reason to be, like, regimented, it has to look this way when it's for my own portfolio. Um, so, hey, it shows a range of what I can do, right? <laughs> um, but we're going to go for the same kind of idea within the raccoons. We're going to have little hash lines for the um, fur, and we're going to just lightly imply some of the features and uh, separating shapes and stuff like that. So yeah, guys, great job. I think we've done great things here. Uh, you have definitely encouraged me enough to keep streaming regularly, so I thank you very much for that, because without you, this would literally be like a exercise in futility. So <laughs> uh, I'm really glad that you come and like spend time with me and talk about Harry Potter and all that jazz. So I look forward to our future conversations and all the artwork that we can possibly create together, because it's going to be good, man. And hey, you met Anthony and James today, okay? Maybe they'll have recurring roles on this show of ours. <laughs> Gosh. All right, you can tune out. It's fine. <laughs> All right, I will say goodbye and have a great night. And whatever time zone you're in, drink water and remember to eat dinner, <laughs> as I will very soon. Bye. <laughs>